Apophis, NASA titles NEO near-Earth object asteroid after the destroyer 99942. The orbit and odds of Apophis hitting Earth. Latest news, ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear Leak Project. How the heck are you? This is a quick update. You can read all about it at the International Business Times or go to yahoo.com. Here are the odds. The giant Apophis asteroid will hit Earth. An enormous asteroid has only a 1 in 100,000 chance of striking Earth in this century, a NASA scientist has said. Some scientists have been studying Apophis, a 1,000-foot asteroid discovered in 04, because of how close the space rock will be getting to our planet. It's scheduled to pass in 2029, and it might get even closer about seven years later as well. Well, this is actually going to be in the parameters of where satellites are actually closer than some satellites it's going to appear again in 2036 some people say it's going to be further away but actually i've read reports it's going to be closer and i am going to share that with you now but this was an excerpt from paul chotis from the jet propulsion laboratory center read all about it yahoo or internationalbusinesstimes.com this is directly from nasa Now, this is a saying that the position is uncertain. What I find interesting is when the media tells you there's absolutely nothing to worry about, but there is, it's like a a total mind play. I mean, let me repeat to you what the name (laughs) of this... Look at this right here. Apophis Encounters... VD-17, ooh, that doesn't sound good. Another potentially hazardous asteroid on 2034, July 17th. Under the standard dynamic model, the highest probability prediction is 6.7 lunar distance approach with the uncertain regions within 1.6 lunar distances of each other at a point with 0.15 sigma of Apophis. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means a lunar lunar distance, nanu, nanu, this is a long way away. Then right here, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Also known as Apep, the destroyer Apophis is the Egyptian god of evil and destruction who dwelled in eternal darkness. As a result of its passage within 40,000 kilometers of the Earth on 2029, this minor planet will move from the A-10 to the Apollo class. Hmm. Minor planet. Well, that's the that's the model number for the asteroid. Isn't it wonderful how they give these things such beautiful names? They're like, oh, the asteroid might hit you. Oh, and by the way, we named it after the Egyptian god of evil and destruction who dwelled in eternal darkness. So if it comes out of nowhere and just strikes the earth, we warned you, even though we said there's a 1 in 100,000 chance. Well, that's the 1 in 100,000 chance. Now, there's conflicting reports, because I'm going to show you reports that are much higher than 1 in 100,000. And you know how there's never a straight answer from the people that love us so much that they make trillions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars, by showing us fairy tale remote control robots on Devon Island, changing the tint a little bit to make it look like a red sky, and then they say it's from Mars. Oh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you for the charades. You're getting paid not nearly enough. We should pay you more money for those charades. Don't you think, guys? Don't you think they deserve more money? Now, take a look at this. This I find interesting. 99942 Apophis. Previously known as a provisional designation 2004 MN4. Don't you like how they change all the names around and they make them sound like venereal diseases so you don't even want to touch it? Is a near-Earth asteroid that caused a brief period of concern in December of 04 because initial observations indicated a probability of up to 2.7% that it would hit Earth. Well, now it's 1 in 100,000. Which is it, guys? 2.7%? Or is it 1 in 100,000? Or is there actually a much better chance that it'll hit Earth than what you're telling us and you just don't want to freak people out? Additional observations during the 2029 close encounter with Earth, Apophis would pass through a gravitational keyhole. Here we go. This is where it gets exciting. It would pass through a gravitational keyhole that CERN would create. No, I'm just kidding. A small region no more than about 965 kilometers. You know, about 600 miles wide. That would set up a future impact exactly seven years later on April 13th. 
I wonder if that's Friday the 13th, 2036, the possibility kept it at level one on the Torino impact hazard scale. And this is until August of 2006. With that said, by 2008, the keyhole had been determined to be less than a kilometer wide. During the short time it had been of great concern, Apophis set the record for the highest rating on the Torino scale reaching level four. So it reached the maximum level threat matrix, and now everything is just fine because their math was a little bit wrong. But the Goldstone radar, I like that name, Goldstone, did effectively rule out a possibility of an Earth impact in 2036. Let's take a look at this. Will you just look at it? Will you just look at it? The Earth distance, 0.38 astronomical units. Well, you divide 0.38 into approximately 93 million miles away, and that's what you get. It looks a lot closer with the scale, with the orbits. This is a great website, ccar.colorado.edu. I'll leave the link in the video description box. You can read all the math for yourself and enjoy the data as it stimulates your brain. This is a right here. Apophis and Earth. The top view showing relative orbit and positions of the bodies. The Earth is seen at a point of intersection of both orbits. And you guys know what this math means, especially these Vs. Everybody knows that. Right here. Oh, yeah. Everybody's doing it. So this shows also a couple other locations, positions. We'll go back here to the NASA.gov. The VD-17. That does not sound good. And you can see the location where they're predicting it versus the Earth. You know, I mean, what would it take for this thing to be knocked out of trajectory just a little bit? What if it hits a satellite? It's going to be in satellite range. What if it starts hitting satellites and then satellites start hitting other satellites and then it turns into this big nasty mess out there? Or it hits a very key satellite. Or it blows up in the general vicinity of other satellites causing more damage. The position is uncertain. Yet they say there's a 1 in 100,000 chance. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the conflicting reports. And with that said, I'm going to close it out today. I will be back tonight heading on the Atlantic Highway looking for a love getaway. No, I'm just kidding. That's the B-52s. I don't know why that song's stuck in my head right now. But with that said, I am on my way. Two, the solar eclipse, the total 33rd degree solar eclipse, the great U.S. solar eclipse. And you know what, guys? I'm going to be around a bunch of other people, so that's not my thing, but I hear that hundreds of thousands of people are going to be in Idaho for this total solar eclipse from all over the world. I mean, I just looked on uh, line last night to see if you could even get a hotel in Idaho or what was available. And people are renting out their rooms in their houses for thousands of dollars. It's crazy. So the location that I'm going, even though it's off the beaten path, and even though it's a private uh, area of land, I think it's approximately a couple miles in about 1.67 miles in radius. You know, I mean, that's the, the size of the land area out there. It's going to be packed with people in motorhomes, RVs, trailers. Now, fortunately, I am meeting the documentary crew out there that is putting together a phenomenal documentary, 90-minute documentary called The Sign. I'm going to leave the link in the video description box. Check this thing out. Make sure to like it. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to watch it when it comes out. It's going to be available on the mainstream media cable networks. So these guys work with a huge media conglomerate. And guess what? They're not assimilated by the Borg. How cool is that? These guys are the real deal. They've been all over the world 
recording and researching information on the September 23rd, the sign, the prophecy. Yes, we've had people on the show before that have talked about how they feel it's either a PSYOP, a Jesuit creation, or it's actually uh, legit, or all of the above. What do you guys think? What's your perception? And oftentimes, it doesn't really matter what we think. If the powers that be think something's going to happen, or if they're going to link it to something, then unless we do something about it, it happens. And you know how they like to tell us about what they're going to do in TV shows and movies and and cartoons and video games and music videos and the news. They do it in a way that it's like, oh, we told you so, even though you thought it was fiction and we manipulated you to think it was going to be fiction. And now that you're talking about it, you're a conspiracy theorist because it was fiction even though it happened in real life as well. Or did it? The way that the media explains it. It's just a total mind screw. Could something happen? Yes, absolutely. I think it's going to be around the 26th, though. I think it's going to be a couple of days after September 23rd. Now, Scott Clark does a great job aligning the planets and the stars in the heavens. But once again, that doesn't mean something bad's going to happen. Now, the Bible says something bad's going to happen. But then I've had guests on the show like Jeffrey Darty, Christian whistleblower, that says the exact opposite. He says, look, this was created as a fear-based tactic by the Jesuit order to keep people in that fight-or-flight mode to make it more difficult for them to reach the higher levels of spirituality. And even in this physical realm, if you're constantly fearing something and you're in that fight-or-flight mode, how creative are you? Some people are more than others. Most people aren't. Most people actually lose creative flow, lose IQ points, and become ignorant in their own fear. I think that if an if a asteroid's going to hit, what they're going to do, if they know about it, they're going to they're gonna do this total spin. They're going to be like, oh, there's a, what's the chances of a doomsday comet hitting Earth? Uh, comet Don- Donkey Doo. Comet Donkey Doo. Comet Donkey Doo is .0001 astronomical units away from the Earth in 17 years. Actually make that seven years. Actually make that 17 months. Actually make that seven days, ladies and gentlemen. What are the chances? Well, you know what? We just did the data, and there's no chance. There's no possibility. You have nothing to worry about. We just tweaked the numbers a little bit. Go back to work. Go back to your regular programming. Continue to consume. 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 Will not assimilate. No, I will not assimilate. No, thank you. No, thanks. Now, let's say that a giant comet does hit Earth. What does, that, what does that mean? What do we do? Well, I mean, enjoy the ride, folks. Buckle up. Be prepared. Have some type of prepared plan, you know, or plan of preparedness, I should say. Nanny, nanny. You don't need to freak out about it. It's always nice to be prepared because if you're prepared and something happens, doesn't that feel good? Wouldn't it be better to be prepared and have nothing happen than to not be prepared and have something happen? Have you ever heard of Murphy's Law? Well, Murphy is an optimist, ladies and gentlemen. Murphy is an optimist. I mean, you can go out and spend like 30 bucks and pick up a quick bivy sack that you could fit in the palm of your hand. You could put in a backpack if you're, um, if you're a lady. You could put it in your purse. Or, hey, if you're a guy and you like a, a purse, there you go, man. You got the man bag. Backpack, glove box, bug out bag under your car seat in a drawer. I mean, you could put these things just about anywhere. Hello! And they're cheap. And that's one thing that if you're in a situation where you got to go quick and it's cold out and you need to stay warm or you get lost or you get stuck somewhere, this quick bivy could help save your life. So click the link in the video description box. Pick one up for yourself. Pick one up for your friends, for your family. Awesome birthday presents. Awesome Christmas presents. Great gifts all around. And they're great to have for yourself. And also, you know, pick up some type of water filtration system you know even if it's something that's about the size of a water bottle you know that's always good to have pick up something that you could start a fire with pick up just little things you could drop about 100 bucks 150 bucks and have a good bug out bag in case you need to go quick now if you want to get into some of the other stuff you can spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on survival gear and food 
been there, done that. But just a few key things you can do. Like I remember when I did that hiking trip, and it was warm, and I was by myself, went out to the Guadalupe Mountain Range. I got lost, it got dark, and I barely made it back. I had hiked almost 25 miles that day. I mean, I was, I was toast. And I was thinking, man, I wish I had a quick bivy. Oh, also, get yourselves a good flashlight, too. Get yourselves a good flashlight. But if I would have had a quick bivy, and if I was, I could have actually taken a rest, just, you know, and the thing was so small, I could have taken it with me. It wasn't like I was, I was lugging around a, a backpack with a, uh, a sleeping bag and an air mattress and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, click the link, be excellent to each other, be aware of what's going on, stay alert, question everything, look for the alternative mode, look for the, I just got harp, you guys, that was awesome, that felt good, <laughs> look for the alternative motive in the media, and watch the wordplay, yes, they will come up with a title to get you to click on that article. And then it'll start off and then read the fine print and then find out who's writing it and find out where they get their information. You know, how, how much in the know is the person that put that article together? How much in the know are the people that wrote the data that the reporter got it from? And, you know, how much do they know? Follow the sources, follow the leads. Just because you read an article that's double-edged you know, it has multi faucets where it's like a it's like a wordplay. You should be scared. No, don't be scared. Everything's fine. You should be scared. Oh, don't be scared. Everything's fine. Oftentimes, it's just the reporter. It's just the you know the person that's writing the article. It's not that doesn't mean that person's in the know. Now you got to remember that the media conglomerates. There's six corporations that control over ninety percent of the media. There's approximately three hundred. I think a little bit less than that. Execs that control the majority of the content that you see here in the media, which makes you feel a certain way, think a certain way. So, yeah, there's certain agendas in play as well. Follow the monies. Also, the media needs to make money. The media needs to sell ads. They like to make a lot of money on their ads. So the more people that watch the media, the more people that click the ads, the more people that click the news, watch the news. So they're going to follow certain forecasts as well. And if people are interested in specific things, they're typically going to follow those as well. There's multiple reasons, folks. It's not just one. So once you say, okay, I know the answer to everything. I'm, I'm not questioning it anymore. I got it. It's figured out. Then that's when you start to, to dissipate and become dilapidated and ignorant in your own ignorance. <laughs> ignorant in your own ignorance. Literally. I mean, that's like a, man, whack, whack, slap, slap. That's like slapping yourself in the face just over and over and over again. Just smack, 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 smack. And like, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. I mean, that's what you're doing. Or it's like there's this, there's like this, <laughs> there's this sliding door. There's a sliding door and it's, it's a sliding glass door. And you keep walking up to the sliding glass door and just going, thud, 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 thud. Like, One of these days I'm going to walk right through it. One of these days it's not going to be there. One of these days it's magically going to disappear. Do, do, do. That's what you're doing. Break out of the norm. Step out of the box. Question the questions that you have. And instead of ju just questioning, question, research, obtain, bring in. And let it flow. Go with the flow. As Bill and Ted say, be excellent to each other, dudes. Be excellent to each other, dudes. And be the change you want to see. LeakProject.com Tell us more about that solar eclipse!